Amen. Amen and amen. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship at Westminster and elsewhere. Uh, this is our, uh, the first of our hybrid services, uh, which will probably last for the rest of time. Uh, so we're glad that you're uh, where you are, that you're well, um, that we are joined together in this virtual universe. So God bless you for being with us today. Amen. And again, we, we welcome you from the sanctuary here in Southwest. And we are so pleased to have some first time visitors with us today who just arrived at the right moment to be in person worship with us today. So blessings on everyone, wherever you are worshiping with us this day. Let me just ask all of you who are not speaking to mute yourselves. Um, so we don't have any unnecessary uh, static in the background. Let's, let's make it work. Except for Mari, as long as Mari doesn't talk. Uh, because we don't want Mari to get muted because she's going to say something later. Right. But just scroll down through the participants and mute anyone that you see that needs gotcha. to be muted. Uh, but on the other hand, there are some things that we, this is a responsive uh, prayer of praise and confession. So we invite those to unmute yourself for this as well. As we think about Trinity Sunday and we think about the, the mystery of God in three persons, that we experience God in, in these different ways, let us give this prayer of praise and confession. Oh God, our maker. Oh, I, do I see, this is what I, I probably need to share this for those who are online. This is exciting. Hello? Oh God, our maker, who said you will be who you will be, who has fashioned all things visible and invisible. Forgive, Forgive us, us for limiting your possibilities. Oh, Jesus, the Christ, who became flesh and lived among us, who led the way to life and commanded us to love one another. Forgive us for many divisions. Oh, Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, who delights in the creation, who calls us into freedom and communion. Forgive us for power. Friends, believe the God's love is from everlasting to everlasting. Jesus says, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. And the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, generosity, faithfulness, and self-control. So may the peace and love of the Holy Trinity be with you all. And also, and also with, with, you, you. with you. And let's stand up and bump hands here as we go through our gallery and pass the peace to one another. And I'll unpin Brian. Peace be with you all. 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 Kathy and Mary, Mary Gary, peace, peace be with you, Robert. Peace be with everyone. Peace be with everyone. Peace be with you, Marie. Good morning, Jean. How are you? Margie with you, Sean. Jean, he's Karen. He's Karen. Peace be with you, George. Peace be with you, Sarah. Mike. Jesse. John be with you, Jean. He's Mike, with you, Karen. Jim, and Sarah, Lloyd, Trisha, and George. Alice and Marcia. Be with you all. Peace be with you. Nate and Bill. Laquan. W. Benita. Good to see you, Mike. Jim. Watching George's screen in the sanctuary. Look at all those people. Ah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. 
Okay. Why don't you play the little tune for us, Brian, as we continue passing the peace with each other and move a little bit, clap your hands as we listen to a little bit of this, this number. All right. Arlene, peace to you. Oops, wrong one. And who else is here? Alice, peace to you and Laquan, Benita. I thought this guy was pretty cool. I wish, I wish I knew how to do this. You can turn that up a little bit, please. Okay. Amen. As, amen. Amen. As we come to uh, listening to the scripture this morning, let's just pause for a word of prayer. Almighty God, we are grateful for all that you do and have done in our lives. We are grateful for your word. We are grateful for this mighty vision of justice and peace and love for all creation. So help us to hear and understand and respond to your word this day. Go with us in your name we pray, amen. amen. So our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Isaiah uh, chapter six. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. 
And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called and the house filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of thongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. Reading from New Testament, Paul's letter to the Philippians 2, 12, 13, 25 to 28. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always listened to me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Still, I think it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and co-worker and fellow soldier, your messenger and minister to my need. For he has been longing for all of you and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. He was indeed so ill that he nearly died. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, so that I would not have one sorrow after another. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, in order that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. This sermon is titled, Here, I, Here We Are, God, Send Us. And this first part is the disruption God uses. The disruption God uses. Isaiah had a vision of God seated not up in a heavenly place, but right on a throne in the Holy of Holies, the most sacred room in the temple in Jerusalem the sanctuary of all sanctuaries. And the winged seraphs were flying around, calling out to each other, holy, holy, holy. And the pivots of the thresholds shook at their voices. Laquan Turner shared an article with us called Eight Disruptive Church Trends that will rule 2021, the rise of the post-pandemic church. Disruptive, the things that shake the thresholds. Listen to this modern day prophecy. Moving forward, many church leaders will realize that those engaging from home and other places will count just as much as those attending in the church building. Well, clap, clap, clap. <laughs> We're clapping for you. To be honest, uh, before Zoom became as well known as Kleenex, 
many of us have probably thought a lot about who was and who wasn't in these seats right here. And, and our underlying anxieties would go up and down with those numbers. Any of you ever felt that little twitch as you come into the room and you look around and you see how many are in here and how many aren't? Our known world has definitely been disrupted and shaken. And the article says that physical church attendance we know has been in decline for decades and COVID has in all likelihood accelerated this change. We will have to adapt the same way the food industries had to adapt with takeout meals and delivery, groceries delivered. People are still eating. And who goes to a movie theater anymore? But we're still watching movies. This is we can rejoice in it. Often new things like new shoes need time though to feel comfortable. It's a cold, wet new day here. Some of you in these seats might wish you were home in your jammies. What we do feel is how good it is to be connected in a way we never imagined was possible. You may have heard the difference between a technical change and an adaptive change. I know you have, Nick. Technical changes are pretty easy because it, it means there's somebody out there who has the knowledge and the skills to fix the problem. We thank Clarence and Dion who are still working. We, we don't have our whole inner and have done their technical work, but now we have a few more pieces to connect together to make it really good. And you're gonna be amazed as we all are, but we're not quite there, but that's a technical problem. You know, we really like people who can fix our problems, don't we? But an adaptive change is something we can't just call in a plumber or another kind of expert to fix because nobody knows the answers but God. Sometimes we're not even sure of the questions. Paul is not talking about a technical change when he says together you should work out your own salvation, your liberation. And God is going to be working in you, enabling you. Good pleasure. Part two is the unprepared people God called. Nothing makes us more aware of our weaknesses and failings than adaptive change. The realities that shake our lives to the core. And as the thresholds of the temple are shaking, the first thing out of Isaiah's mouth is, woe is me, which is really a mourning, like a death. I have died, death to me, woe is me. I'm not fit for this time, and nor can anyone around help me. Life is so full of these adaptive changes to which there are no easy answers, no solutions, no skilled person who can just come in and fix it for you. What do parents do when their children are suffering with mental illness, substance abuse, or both? do suddenly alone and aging alone? What happens when your marriage or any lifelong dream just falls to pieces? Like Isaiah, we might cry out, woe is me. I am not ready to face this and there is no one who can help. And communities too. We find ourselves racking our brains. How do we figure out and solve the deepest issues around us? How do we fix the shaking of the, our own form of government in this country? How do we 
deal with the disparities that just surround us and are in our face every day? How do we deal with the massive impacts of climate change? You could just go on and on with the adaptive changes we are facing. The seraphs are flying around singing about the glory of God, holy, holy, holy. And all we can think is, woe is me. What is to be done? What good is God's glory if we do not feel capable or fit to deal with the issues we face? To be honest, we, we hold sometimes very deep within ourselves, all of the trauma of these shakings, these disruptions, and these traumas, the trauma of like, racism, or the trauma of the death of a child, or any trauma that has happened, whatever trauma it is, we are left with guilt, with shame, Despair, bitterness maybe, hate. We are saved by grace alone. We are liberated by grace alone. Imagine a hot coal touching your lips right now. It sounds like torture, doesn't it? <laughs> That's torture which is what it feels like to live with guilt and shame. That's what it feels to live like hate that burns. It's what it feels like when all of your worldly defenses are knocked down and you're standing there vulnerable, you're standing there naked to yourself and to God. And it's in those positions though that we most feel the life-giving power of God's grace. It's in those moments when we most, if we will ever feel it, we will feel God's grace then in those moments. And those hot coals brand Isaiah's lips and he hears the seraph saying, your guilt has departed. Your sin is blotted out. And that grace, if it reaches us, amazing. Have any of you experienced that grace in your life? How many times? <laughs> How many times? Or are you sitting here today waiting for such grace? If so, may these words be a promise to you. Your guilt will be gone. You will know your sin is blotted out. You, you will know that there is no shame of anything. Your bitterness will disappear. Your hate will float away. Then you will hear God ask, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And look, this same Isaiah immediately blurts out, Here I am! Send me! Part three. The places God will send us. The post-pandemic church article said that said something that was true even before the pandemic. God's vision is not limited to the size of any sanctuary we can fill. And if that is our goal, then we will miss our mission, God's mission. God calls us together as the church from these little boxes on the screen and in this these seats God calls us together so we can hear the word again, the word of promise, the word of truth, so we can share our woes 
And the church is always best if it's a place where we can share our woes or feel safe in at least sitting in them, where we can tell our stories of amazing grace. And from the this thing called church, God asks, whom can I send? Who will go for us? Whom can I send out into these streets? Whom can I send into your neighborhoods and your homes? Whom can I send into the businesses and the boardrooms and into the seats of power? Whom can I send into the prisons and the hospitals and the schools? Whom can I send into all the world where people and all living things are facing earth shaking changes and are filled with guilt and shame and bitterness and hatred and despair? And all of us who have a hint even of God's grace find ourselves saying, here we are, God, send us, send us. Send us not now because we're somehow smarter. We have more answers than others. Send us just because you need someone to go. And we who are touched by grace and still full of our anxieties and our doubts and our fear and trembling, who we are is all God needs. Who you are right now today is all God needs. Here we are, God. Send us. Amen. 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 This is a favorite song we like to sing. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. I should have given you a hymn book. Do you remember what that is? <laughs> heart. Amen. And if someone could bring the prayer book up, you may be seated. Boy, I haven't said that in a long time. Um, probably won't say it again. We'll have to figure that one out. <laughs> um, this is a time when we receive our offerings and we have put a 
many of you give online and we appreciate that very much. Uh, some of you give cash and today's a good day to do that. If you have cash here, there are, off, there are envelopes at the back and you can, you can do that. Um, but always remember, and on this particular Memorial Day Sunday, I just wanted to lift up legacy giving. Um, some of us are privileged to have more wealth than we know what to do with. And when the time comes, when we pass on, we have choices to make about where that wealth will go. And Dale McIver, for instance, made a decision because he had no children and the church was his commitment. He made the decision to give his whole estate to the church. We're still waiting for that estate to, to be settled. And of course he had many years in, um, in a very expensive retirement home. So it's not huge, but $90,000 is nothing to sneeze at and will be a benefit to this church. So we all have to think about our situations and what we have to leave. And that is one thing that some, some of us have to leave. And if you ever wanna talk about how you might do that and how you might plan for that, do let me know. So at this time, we have a very great honor as we think, and Mari, I hope you can get unmuted now. Can you unmute yourself, Mari? And can you get a little closer? Get a little closer. Uh, can you hear me? Not very well. You're going to have to get closer to than that and speak as loud as you can. Two inches from the mic. <laughs> She's two inches from the mic. Well, I want to make sure they can hear it. But uh, let me let me just begin by sharing this story. This is Memorial Day weekend, and we want to take a moment to. I'm going to read. Oh, this is the wrong thing to read. This is what I want to read. read, read Mari wrote this book. Of, whoops, Mari, I'm not ready yet. Not ready yet. She says, my son, John Michael Andrews, this book would not have been written without the living and the dying of my firstborn son, John Michael Andrews. It was his death that gave me the experience to write these poems. Michael was born in Brisbane, Australia in 1945 after I married Lieutenant John Stewart Andrews. And he lived in Dayton with his three older brothers and sisters until with his three brothers. During the time of his college, he was active in the school's literary magazine Dimensions and became its editor. He volunteered for the U.S. Army Air Corps, became a helicopter pilot, and was sent to Bien Hoa Air Force Base in Vietnam. During the three months before his death in a fiery crash of two helicopters flying on mission, he saw and wrote about what he was seeing, flying low over the land or dropping off or picking up soldiers being sent on mission and his poem, Evening at Bien Hoa AFB, arrived in our Dayton mailbox three days before a military team came to our front door to inform us of Michael's death on April 30th, 1967. So if we can see Mari, yeah. I'm here. she's going to read this poem. Brian, can you pin Mari, please? Or somebody? Go ahead, Mari. Uh, this is Mike's poem. The only one he wrote while he was training and then active in the uh, Army Air Corps. This is entitled The Evening at Ben Hong Air Force Base. I saw a Dutchman's brown today, heard a Dutchman's call on pavement, a Polish lady plucked some strings, watched the Syrian sand turn 
love me. Once I couldn't see the glimmer in the daffodil brown. Through my door, looking east at dusk, I couldn't see the orange sun. But I saw a paling sky, a couple of darkened clouds that seemed the shade of that dark air that wrapped itself in folds around a mill. A festival seemed out of place, yet someone bounced with one in the courtyard outside my door. That sound punctuates the quiet evening. That deaf hand disturbed the Polish lady's music. Once, 30 years ago, she played her harpsichord for a machine. Her shoulders hunched. Now I hear her amidst the bounces. German convolutions that lack those intricacies that dust notes swirl wildly about the ceiling fan. I saw the Dutchman's frown today, heard a basketball on pavement. A Polish lady plucked some strings, watched a ceiling fan turn slowly. And that is the power. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mari. Thank you so much. Brian's going to share. I, I looked up Polish harpsichordists and found this, found this number by Wanda Landowska. I don't know if this is what John Michael was listening to, but, and then here's a painting, a Rembrandt's painting of the mill. And I don't know if that's the brown in that, that he was, uh, Brian's gonna play this. Let's be in prayer about all of the memories we're bringing today. We begin in two minutes. Yes, please. Or what, whatever it says. Uh, yeah. No. Yes. No. Two minutes of it. Just two. The first two minutes. Doors open and I'm back. 
I meant to bring a basketball over so one of you could be bouncing a ball. It's interesting, isn't it, to think of him sitting in that hot room at the Air Force Base, watching the ceiling fan, listening to that, thinking about Rembrandt, hearing the life outside. We're grateful for Michael's life and for all the lives lost in battle and for all the lives that we have uh, said goodbye to in just the battle of living. Before Kathy reads a sort of a concluding poem by, by Mari about remembering, I just wanna share these prayers from our book today. And uh, check the chat for any prayers in the chat. Not sure there are any prayers in the chat. The very beginning. Please pray for my friend's mother who is in the hospital with a kidney infection. God, keep her and bless her. Lord, hear our prayers. Please bless my family with your prayers, and I will pray for your ministry too. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. Our prayers. We pray for Irene's brother, James. He's okay? He tried to kill himself jumping in front of a train two weeks ago and his leg lost both legs. But yes. Yes for James. Pray for him, James, for Irene's mom, as uh, he continues to decide whether to live or not. Pray for James. God, hear our prayers. Yes. With thanksgiving, oh God, we Remember though, before you those whom you sent into the world and have now gathered into your final embrace. Keep us in fellowship with them until we meet again in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Jesus Christ, who taught us and the Holy Spirit who prays with us, saying as you know best, our Father and Mother in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive us our trespasses. Save us from the sins of God. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the power and the glory of the power of the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Yeah. Ruth, we're also praying today for Bill Truxton's sister as she continues to experience health issues. God, hear our prayers. prayers. Yes. Hmm. Jim, Nick, Nick Mann has shared two names of two other young men who went to Vietnam and didn't come home. Nick, Jim Tangerman, and Jerry Poole. God. Sure. Hear our, our prayers. prayers. Thank you, Nick. We continue in prayer as we hear um, Mari's son, Kathy, read Mari's poem called Remembering. Just unmute yourself, Kathy. Okay. And I, uh, before I read this, I want to say a special thank you to Ruth and Brian uh, this service is so meaningful to me, and this is the closest I've felt to my brother Mike in over 50 years. So that's the power of what you do, and I thank you. This poem written by my mom uh, is called Remembering. We gather here to remember them, those ones so dear to us, who fill our hearts with wonder, pain, and joy, for some, that presence was as a field of dreams, of expectations gone frightfully awry. For some, the knowledge of impending loss over many years. For some, the living that included anger, fear, despair. For some, the knock at the door, hearing those terrible words. For some, watching the fast fall from health to death. The circumstances differ. The heart knows no such difference. Only that great void, the empty chair, the not ringing of the phone, the no more of teasing and of laughter, the soul that seeks meaning from such madness. For all, the time was far too short. And now, what do we do with our present time? At first, survival is the task. Each day, each hour, each minute. How to support the siblings. How to support our partners in their grief. For those now alone, how to support that self in such aloneness. Each present here today is a winner of many battles deep within. There is a pool of common understanding here today that arises from hard journeys traveled on roads so rough and desolate. Yet, here we are today, surviving the journey, knowing life more truly, knowing ourselves more deeply, living our lives in ways not formerly dreamed of, living. We hold the memories of our child, our children close. We add the learnings that the months and years have wrought. We now live our lives melded with the being of our child and find a richness there and look for ways to share this melding of loved lives in new ways, in our own lives, in our ongoing relationships, in our interactions in the world, as we ponder anew the depths of love. Thank you, Kathy. Amen. Amen. And we close with, oh, yes, sorry, Jean.
Yes. Thank you, Gene. Gene just stood up and I'm sorry we didn't, we may try to get him on recording after the service, but um, he wanted us to remember all the veterans. I think you were saying World War II or just all veterans, all veterans who've died. And he wanted us to remember Colonel Bob Listu, who after a distinguished uh, career in the military, after that began to fly diplomats all over the country, all over the world and to help uh, issues with, and I, I didn't hear everything you said exactly, Gene, I apologize, but I'd heard Chiang Kai-shek in there. So there were, a, he was a transporter and a connector of people. So for Bob Liz to God hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. So, we want to rejoice with Ginger, who is telling us that she moved into her own. Ginger is a Venezuelan immigrant who's working several jobs just to make ends meet uh, while she seeks asylum here. And she just was able to move into her own studio apartment. Uh, so prayers of rejoicing for Ginger. God, hear our, hear prayers. our prayers. For all of you, our... We thank you for being here today, and we close with a beautiful song from the Lion King, The Circle of Life. God gathers us, God sends us, and finally God just embraces us. So let's continue in a prayerful spirit as we listen to this beautiful song.
Amen. Amen. Let's give a hand to ourselves. We have made it through our first hybrid worship service. Praise God. <laughs> I hope you feel closer to God now than when maybe you started this morning, that you've heard a word of something that uh, is going to go with you. And as you are sent out into the world, that that promise of God's grace is going to be something that is just close in your hands. We often say, come as you are. But let's just say to go as you are. Go as you are and be at peace. We love you all. Amen. 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 Peace, everybody. Peace, peace, peace. everybody. There's and no post just stand up and unmute and, yourself and maybe, or say goodbye on the way out. Oh, yeah. Unmute yourselves, everybody, and say goodbye to everybody here. You all on screen, say goodbye to us. We can hear goodbye. you. Bye. 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 Blessings for the week. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Thank everyone. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you next Thank week. You. Thank you. Thank you. Next week. I'm gonna be in I'm gonna be in uh, Houston next week, but Brian will be here. See you then. Thank you, Brian Thanks, and Ruth. Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thank you guys. All Great right, to bye. see everybody. Mike, you be well. I hope so. <laughs> you know it. Be well. Congratulations, Ginger. <laughs>